Okay, I wasn't gonna do this purely because it's two rock with my strap. I was kind of listening to the tones that were coming back and the feel of the thing and playing with it. And I was kind of like, this is not really doing it for me at all. And I've done a video already talking about how much of a different amp it felt like playing it with a Les Paul style guitar, hotter pickups, and it's totally transformed my opinion of the lead channel of this amp in particular, which is now totally in the wheelhouse of what I think of as that double tone where it's yes fuzzy, yes creamy, but also has this lovely bloom to it and kind of what was a stiff feel with the strap is kind of given away to a bit more of a buttery kind of biscuit base. Anyway, so I uh, endeavored to try and capture it with the Nano Cortex. This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. <laughs> something missing in the nano cortex i do feel like it's kind of a little bit of a darker tone and it's not getting some of the kind of bloomy and sagginess but it is in any case i think quite a nice tone <laughs> If you're enjoying these tones, then feel free to use the buy me a coffee link. When I give this TS1 back to Chris, I'll be buying him at least a coffee. Thanks, Chris, so much for letting me borrow this. And Chris actually said to me he hasn't tried this amp with his PAF, so he's got a really nice R9. And uh, I think I'm going to be encouraging him strongly that he needs to try this. So the Nano Cortex, I think you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, but let's just hear it by itself, in and of itself. I decided to capture it just direct with no IR so that you can blend in your own IRs if you've got preferences. I think this is a really good way to actually dial in your own presets so that you've got something consistent that you can kind of marry to your other tones. Uh, it, if you switch IRs too much and bake in all of this stuff, I think you can find that these things don't necessarily gel together massively well. But yeah, this also actually kind of cleans up. Definitely, to me, has some of those key kind of flavors.
So there's five captures that I've actually put together of this and um, yeah, I think there's one preset which has, you know, the gain at 10, not preset, capture, which maybe might suit a strap more than this. It might be a bit over gained for a Les Paul. Um, the, the cleans, I think, will work nicely with the strap for sure. So I've done a couple of clean tones, a couple of, well, three lead tones, um, but hopefully you'll dig some of those tones. To me, they are totally representative of what I think of as that kind of Dumble lead tone. <laughs> One of the things that I've generally been missing when I've played um, these Dumble clones. So it's making me think actually maybe I should, should revisit some of this stuff and kind of pay attention with, uh, you know, the guitar that I'm using. Anyway, feel free to use the buy me a coffee link. Uh, as soon as I see someone do that, I'll drop these straight into the cloud. Um, I hope you dig playing these as much as I've digged making them. Doug, digged, been digging. Um, Two Rock TS1 and um, yeah, fabulous, fabulous amp with the Les Paul. Pick your own IRs to go with it. Um, and as I say, all of those captures are kind of without an IR so that you can make your own selection about what IRs you want to pick. If you're using IEMs, you might want to use the high cut in the cab uh, and maybe a bit of the low cut as well. You might find that these might be quite full sounding. You know, it's that kind of darker, fuzzier kind of dumble thing going on. Cheers, Chris, so much. And what a fantastic amp with a Les Paul. <laughs>